Hello everyone, I'm Miss Nelly. Welcome to my channel. I'm a Hong Konger who studied in Canada and eventually decided to stay to become a teacher. I'm currently Ontario certified and I teach science majority of my time. Also, I coach my school swim team for fun as well. When I was a science student at the University of Toronto, I always thought that I didn't really need to be good at English. However, as my study progressed, I realized that being a science student would need to be good at English even more. There are lots of scientific terminology, and also the writing styles are quite different. Therefore, I decided to make this series of videos to specifically talk about science English. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also give me a thumbs up by clicking the like button. Let's go! Hello everyone, I'm Miss Nelly. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about how to learn scientific terminology effectively. In the first episode, we are going to talk about some simple formulas on how to learn scientific terminology. First of all, before we actually talk about ter the terminology, we need to talk about word structure. The proper name for that is actually called FX, but it's okay, we're just going to stick with word structure. The reason why we're going to learn that is because majority of our scientific terminology are actually coming from Latin and Greek origins. So usually when we put those origins together, I mean put those words, words together, we're going to have something like a formula like this, which is a prefix, a root, and a suffix. Usually a prefix is the beginning of the word, and usually it is used as a description of what is going to be described in the root. So for example, they can be talking about like numbers, they can talk about like yes or no, they can talk about big or small, but usually it's a description of what the root is. And now when we talk about the roots, that's basically our major description of what we are actually talking about. So for example, it could be an object or it could be like something very sciencey or like something that is actually what we're describing. And last but not least, when we have our suffix, the suffix is basically describing what the word is actually used for. So for example, it can describe as an adjective or it can describe as a verb. Sometimes suffix can be also used to add more meaning to the root as well. So in this case, suffix is pretty uh, multi-purpose sometimes. Anyways, so we're going to look at an example. So the example here is called unacceptable. So we all know what unacceptable means, but how do we actually break that down? So when we're looking at unacceptable, we're looking at same thing, the formula prefix, root, and suffix. So we can break down the word into un, accept, and then able. So obviously the un is the prefix, and un usually have the meaning of not, or no, or a negative meaning. And then after that, well, we all kind of know what it means by accept, so I'm not going to bother with talking about the action of accept. So even if we don't have the suffix able, we're still talking about not accept. Now, once we add the suffix able, the, um, the suffix able basically turn the word into adjectives. It's not a, uh, exactly, not necessarily have to be a verb into adje uh, adjectives, but what happened is that because we're talking about accept, and accept is a verb, oh, sorry, is a verb. So in this case, like we are going to talk about it as a verb changing it into adjectives. So once we put all of them together, we're going to have not, accept, and an adjective. So therefore, that's what it means, an adjective that talks about not um, accepting the action. Now, today we're going to talk about the root cause scope. So I'm a chemistry and physics teacher, and majority of the time, I use the word scope a lot. So for example, it could be like telescope, microscope, microscopic, endoscope, spectroscope, radioscopy. There's so many ways that we can actually use scope. But technically, even if I don't know what these word means, I can actually guess the meaning of those words or like have a general idea of what those words actually means. The reason why for that is because scope is actually a Greek root, so it does have a Greek origin. It means C. So what it means in this case that when we look at all six vocabulary, I can actually guess what it means by, well, majority of them will be related to seeing. So now if I break that down, for example, when we're looking at telescope, telescope, the tele is actually a root. So this word actually have two roots, doesn't have the prefix, doesn't have a suffix, but tele, you can think about telephone, teleport, basically it means far. So therefore telescope means that it's seeing far. So if you think about what a telescope would do, well, it's allowing you to see something far. So same thing with microscope. So the word micro is also a root. So in this case, we don't have a prefix and we don't have a suffix as well, but 
micro is also having a Greek origin, which is small. So therefore, when we're looking at microscope, it means that it's something that allows you to see something small so, and you know what a microscope would do. Now, what if I change the scope, like instead of ending with an E and change it into IC? Now, I do have a suffix in this word, so I have microscopic. So whenever you're adding an IC in that word, majority of the time is actually changing it into an adjective that means related to. So you can say like a microscopic book, and what it means that is that book is related to seeing something small. Or like you can talk about like, a, um, like an organism that is actually microscopic. That means that the organism is very small that you actually need a microscope to see it. Now, how about the other three? So for example, endoscope. So endo, the root endo is also a Greek origin. It means inside or internal. So in this case, when we're looking at the word endoscope, it means that something that allows you to see inside. And if you know what an endoscope means, it's basically a tube that goes into your body and it allows the doctor or whoever is operating it to see what is actually going on inside your body. The next one is called spectroscope. So the word spectro is actually a root that coming from a Latin origin, and it means a radiant of energy. And the radiant of energy is basically when you have an energy or like a light, and then you shine it into a certain place, and then it's scattered into different colors or different lights. So in this particular case is to scatter into different colors. So for example, in this particular word spectroscope or this particular device, what it does is actually when you see through it, you can actually see one light being divided into multiple different rays of light, so therefore it's called a spectroscope. Now, the next one is radioscopy. Now, we know what a radio mean because, well, back then, a million years ago, or like, well, maybe like 30 or 40 years ago, we have something called a radio. And you can kind of guess what a radioscopy means because, well, you know, radio is kind of like rays that transmit uh, information, and then back in the days, people listen to the news in radio. Actually, people listen to news and radio when they're driving too. Now, when we have radioscope, let's say there's no Y, the radioscope is basically something that allows you to see through rays. So majority of the time, we're talking about X-ray. Now, when we add the Y, it means the characterize. So it's basically something that, or like a subject area, or like an object that is characterized into like something that allows you to see with rays. So radioscopy is actually when you go into the hospital and then there is kind of like an area or subject area that study how they can use x-ray to see through your body and help you to identify what is actually going on in your body. Now, you will still argue that, well, I still have to remember all of them. That's true. But once you see more and more roots, more and more suffix and more and more prefix, you can actually guess a lot of the meaning of the word. Actually, for me, I don't even memorize that anymore, but I can actually guess quite a bit of scientific terminology. Now, for example, if we look at this particular word, I haven't talked about this word in the previous slides. However, you can pretty much guess what this word actually means. If you want to pause and think about it, you're welcome to, but I'm going to tell you the answer. Now, the answer is called spectroscopy. Now, I can break this word into spectro and the scope and then with the Y. Now, you know what a spectral means when you have a light coming in and then it will scatter into different rays of light. Now, you also have the scope, which is allowing you to see. So basically, we're looking at something that, well, you can see a scatter of light. When we add the Y, we're pretty much talking about something that is characterized. So we're talking about an area of study or like not necessary study, but like an area or like an object or like um, like a hospital or like a char character of a bunch of different technique or equipment. Well, I do know what it means, so that's why I'm kind of like leading towards that direction. So in this case, we can kind of guess into that direction. And what it actually means is a bunch of different like techniques that you can use in chemistry or physics to shine a light onto an unknown chemical, and then you can use that to see how the lights are being reflected and scattered, and you can identify what is actually in the chemical that was originally unknown. Well, anyways, I don't know if you like my video. I hope that you do like this video. And next time we're going to talk about more roots. We're also going to talk about more prefixes. And I hope that you enjoy this. And I hope that you can actually like and share. And if you do want to, you can subscribe to my channel and also comment below. 
thank you very much and have a great day.